I'm back for another video where we are going to break down whether or not gluten is causing leaky gut or other issues for you. By the end of this video, you'll be able to know whether or not it should stay or go. So what is leaky gut? It's actually something that everybody can get that happens when the tight junctions in your intestinal lining, they start to widen from a source of inflammation, maybe the food, stress, actually, you know, stress is such a common reason why it can start to develop. These junctions they start to widen so when this happens food particles toxins parasites bacteria they leak out into the bloodstream causing inflammation in the body so this of course will actually cause some symptoms for some it's bloating skin issues like eczema rash acne and even autoimmune disease in some so leaky gut is serious but the good news is that there are ways that you can take care of yourself to reduce it and heal it and seal the gut back up so gluten is actually a protein found in wheat and some people have celiac disease where they can't have gluten at all the protein called gliadine our immune cells in the gut they attack it and then they also damage the enzyme that breaks down the gluten and that ends up damaging the intestinal villi which the purpose of those are to help absorb our nutrients so celiac can be very serious and actually really life-threatening because it prevents your body from being able to absorb water and nutrients that it needs to thrive which downstream it can also cause issues with the other organs not only from a nutrient standpoint and not having the nutrients that you need but with the leaky gut, these antibodies, they circulate around the body. They can be confused and then start attacking other areas of the body too, like your liver, your brain, and then all of these problems start. Gluten sensitivity is different than celiac in the way that it's not as severe of a reaction. It can still cause leaky gut and symptoms of like mouth itching, bloating, those types of things and digestive discomfort, but it's not the same as celiac disease. So why is gluten a problem and why is this even a conversation to begin with? What we need to understand is the wheat that we're actually eating right now is not the same wheat that our parents were eating. It's actually been changed to be able to grow faster, to withstand bugs, and all of these compounds, they do make a difference once they're digested into our body because our gut doesn't like those things. It can actually promote leakiness and inflammation. When they look at the actual genetic makeup of the wheat today, there's actually new proteins in there that weren't that aren't in original wheat so these new proteins a lot of people theorize that these new proteins are the reason why gluten is causing so many more people problems these days with allergies inflammation and the uptick of people having issues with gluten additionally today's wheat has been created to be more soluble with water so when it can be mixed inside all of these packaged processed foods that you often find why would that have gluten in it Wheat has been put in there to act as a texturizer or some sort of stabilizer to help with the perhaps the flavor or whatever they need to do. But you know, people are theorizing that that is causing issues for a lot of people as well. So now we're beginning to see the picture of why gluten today is not the same as it was maybe 50 years ago. And you know, you can get tested for gluten sensitivity, but one of the best ways to determine whether or not gluten is bothering you is to actually eliminate it for about 30 days or more. So what's the problem with wheat if you're not actually sensitive to it? Do we need to avoid it? What do we need to know? Given the information that we know that the wheat is not the same anymore, and also even though celiac population is only about 1-2% to of people, 80% of people don't know that they have celiac. It's a stressful way to live your life because there's gluten in everything. You have to really go out of your way to live your life around food. Additionally, there is evidence it has addictive properties in it, so keep that in mind that if it acts on our opioid receptors, it has an influence on how addictive a certain food can be. The bottom line to help you in your decision making is just remembering the fact that when our body is in a pro-inflammatory state, healing can't take place. If you're on a mission to reach a health goal, to lose weight, to heal your skin, to feel more energy, to figure out what is ailing you, then we have to figure out what is the root cause of the inflammation that I'm experiencing because conditions and diseases you know there's inflammation behind those things so we have to be very diligent in realizing what it is that's bothering our system and getting to the bottom of that so inflammation starts in the gut can cause leaky gut when it comes to discovering what your inflammatory source is always start with the gut because we want to make sure that those tight junctions are intact and things are not leaking out into the bloodstream and bothering the rest of our body because you won't get anywhere unless you address that 
but putting your body into a place where the inflammation has been reduced you're healing so much healing can take place and you get that information like maybe from an allergy test or an elimination diet just be be your own advocate and do something with that information act on it improve your life and the quality of your health with that information. If you're not sensitive to gluten and you don't have celiac disease, but you wanna do, you wanna put your gut in the best state possible, I would recommend doing a modified gluten approach, which if you're not sensitive to gluten, which would involve taking out processed forms of gluten and eating organic. When you're eating grains, choose whole grains, gluten-free grains, quinoa, brown rice. Try to just incorporate a gluten-free lifestyle without being completely gluten-free. If you don't need to be, you probably will feel a lot better because of the nature of wheat these days is just not the same. So I always try to find sourdough bread. If I'm gonna have like a slice of bread because when the fermentation takes place in that sourdough, then the gluten actually, the gluten content is decreased because the bacteria actually eat it. There are plenty of more mindful, health-minded decisions that you can make with your food choices that would actually be better. I've seen a lot of people go gluten-free but then buy really highly processed forms of gluten-free breads, crackers, and then I'm not sure how much better off you are if you're just switching from gluten to those things because then we gotta remember that blood sugar is also a component here like we don't want to just spike blood sugar because that also causes inflammation and a lot of these gluten-free foods are processed down rice and potato starch and these things have an impact on our blood sugar similar to how processed wheat and sugar would so keep that in mind as well if you're pursuing a gluten-free lifestyle these highly refined foods are really easy to eat a bunch of them so like picture a hundred calorie slice of bread 15 grams of carbohydrates when you eat that, you don't really even feel that, but then if you eat like a quarter cup of grains, like whole grains like quinoa, that is actually really filling. And so you notice the difference sooner and it's easier to eat in more moderate portions. And that, I didn't even talk about the nutrient density of those whole grains, the B vitamins, the fiber inside that will benefit you and your energy level as well. So I hope this perspective was helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.